Hello, Avenue family. I hope you are enjoying a fun and safe holiday weekend with your friends and family. I would love to hear from you. Where are you watching from? Are you home? Are you traveling? Let us know in the comments below. If you're joining us for the very first time, welcome. We are so happy to have you with us today. If you are engaging through Facebook, you can type new or just say hello if you'd like. You can also text Avenue to 702-727-8280 and a team member will love to say hi back to you. If you're watching on the church online platform, simply click the connect button because we are so glad that you are here and we would love to connect with you. I love this series of talks that we are in, Changed People Change the World. The Bible is full of people, changed people, come on, who changed the world. There are countless stories of men and women who were ordinary, living their routine lives, and then suddenly a step was taken, an experience happened, and they were changed by God, and they went out to make an incredible difference in the world. Do you know that God wants that for us? You and I were created by God with purpose. In fact, Psalm 138 says this, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Psalm 57 verse two says this, I cry out to God most high, to the God who fulfills his purpose for me. I love this, but I wanna look real quick at Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. It says, I knew you. God is talking to Jeremiah. So if you ever had a moment where you're like, I need God to speak to me, God was speaking directly to Jeremiah. He said, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and I appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Jeremiah said, oh, sovereign Lord, I can't speak for you. I am too young. I got to tell you that God has a unique design, a plan, a purpose for your life. And it is not based on age. It's not based on gender or ethnicity. Purpose is in you and it's revealed more and more as you live out your relationship with Jesus Christ. And we can try to deny it. Come on, we can make excuses for why we can't do it. Jeremiah did, he said, I'm too young. So if you ever have had doubt in your life that your life has meaning, friend, it's in you. And that meaning, that purpose, your strengths, your gifts, your passions, they grow at unprecedented rates when we are in close proximity to the one who placed them there. Come on, that is so good. Your purpose grows at unprecedented rates when in close proximity to the one who placed it there. What does that mean? It means that you are going to grow closer to your purpose as you grow closer to God. You're gonna grow in your purpose as you grow closer to God. Let me show you how this thought was lived out in somebody's life. I'm gonna take you to Acts chapter six because we're about to eavesdrop on the first conflict in the church. What? Churches have conflict? What are you talking about? Of course, churches have conflict because they're made up of people and people are not perfect. Problems arise, conflicts arise. The early church had just started. Peter and the other disciples, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They are telling everybody about Jesus and salvation salvation, baptisms are happening, and the church is growing incredibly fast, and bam, we've got our first church conflict. So Acts chapter 6 verse 1 says this, but as the believers rapidly multiplied, hear me, that's a good problem, but as believers were rapidly multiplying, they're growing, the church is growing at a crazy rate, there were rumblings of discontentment. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of foods. Let me stop right there for a moment. We have to understand that Jesus redefined what people formerly knew as religion. Religion was exclusive. Jesus was inclusive. He died for all. His grace covers all who receive it. Jesus painted a broader, a greater picture of a multicultural church. It was a picture of diversity of people, but come on, that were united by faith in Christ Jesus. So as multiple groups of people are coming together through their salvation, discrimination was a problem that they had to face. And hear me, they faced it. They did it. We cannot be afraid of problems. The goal of life is not to avoid problems. Problems often pull out our purpose. Problems often pull out the purpose in us. I want you to think about Joseph. Joseph's problems pulled out his purpose. He navigated and led an entire nation through a seven-year famine. The problem pulled out his purpose. He was a part of the solution to the problem. Moses, God spoke to him through a burning bush. The problem was that Israel was oppressed and in need of freedom. And Moses was gonna be part of the solution to the problem. 
I think about Nehemiah, and maybe you've never heard the word Nehemiah before, but Nehemiah is a man in the Old Testament, and his people had been exiled for a long time, meaning that they were away from where they are originally from, and now it was time for them to be freed and be returned to their original home, but they were in great trouble. Nehemiah received news that his people were hurting, that the city was broken, that the gates to their city had been completely burned down, and I want you to see how Nehemiah responds. In Nehemiah chapter 4, 1 verse 4, it says, When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. Friends, I know that many of us have been weeping over what's going on in our country. Our hearts are broken of what we're reading and the news that we're receiving about what's taking place in our nation. And we can do what Nehemiah did. For some days I mourned and I fasted and I prayed before the God of heaven because he knew that it was the God of heaven who could bring in the real change. But I love this because Nehemiah knew that he had a part as well that he could play. Nehemiah would end up being the catalyst leader that would bring in the rebuilding of this city. He would be there to see it resurrect and and become a place that could be home to his people again. Problems are a part of life, but we have to realize that we can't just spend our life avoiding problems. Problems often pull the purpose out of us. Could it be that I am here for such a time as this. Maybe we'd ask questions like, could it be a reason why this bothers me? Could it be that the God in heaven, come on, place gifts and strengths and passion in me that could be a part of the solution to the problem? See, James chapter one, verse two and four, this is my love-hate verse. I've got a love-hate relationship with this verse. It says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, it says when, not if or maybe, like they are coming. Problems are coming your way. Consider it an opportunity. Come on, for great joy. I would even say, consider it an opportunity for you to use your gifts. Consider it an opportunity to grow your purpose. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Do not spend your life dodging hardships, dodging problems, but ask God, what do you say about this? And what can I do? When the 12 apostles found out that there's a problem, that there is discrimination taking place in the church, that widows are not being fairly treated, like we need to do something about it. They gathered together all the disciples in that community. And they said, I want you to choose seven leaders, seven leaders from this particular community who could be a part of the solution. There's a discrimination problem. Widows need to be cared for. We need a solution. So they chose seven leaders from that community. How do we know this? How do we know that they took seven people from the community? Come on, because so many times we want someone from the outside to come in and fix all of our problems. I love what the apostles did. No, they said in your community, there are going to be people who are leaders, who have giftings and passions, and they care about this problem, and they can be a part of the solution. So how do we know that these seven people were from this community? Well, these seven men all had Greek names all Greek names. These men were chosen to problem solve and to meet the needs of their people. See, there are leaders in communities all around us, hurting communities, thriving communities, divided communities. There are leaders that can make an incredible difference when called upon and when empowered to do so. See, the criteria for the seven people who were being chosen to be the problem solvers and to lead the solution The criteria was that they needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, we're not trying to do anything apart from Jesus and his Holy Spirit. They needed to be faith-filled, filled with wisdom, moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. They had to be people of character and integrity. Friends, you can have all the talent in the world. You can be even the loudest voice in the room. But if you do not have character, if you don't live a life of integrity, of honesty, a life centered around the person of Jesus, your voice and your talent, your strengths, They're only going to take you so far. But imagine a life fully surrendered to God. Imagine those passions, those gifts, that heart, that talent, being fully supported by the amazing power of the Holy Spirit. Now that is a world changer. See, as a Christian leader, whether you are a church leader, a business leader, or you're in management of any kind, competency is a wonderful and necessary thing, right? We need team members who are competent, that they have skills and they're able to do the job. But hear me, friends, if a person excels in competency but is deficient in character, it will harm the health, the mission, and the vision of any team, any organization, or any church. His or her performance may be unmatched in their field. But hear me, if they're dishonest, if they're unkind, 
If they lack the character and the integrity, their skill will not be worth the price you have to pay and the price that everyone has to pay to work alongside them or under them. Great performance cannot excuse poor character. It can't happen. Great performance cannot excuse poor character. And the apostles knew this. We need righteous leaders. Come on, we need honest leaders. We need leaders that are filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. This is where we meet Stephen. Stephen is one of the seven men chosen to represent, to love, and to serve his community. In Acts chapter 6, verse 8, it describes Stephen as this. Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. For all my studiers out there, I got to let you know this, that Stephen is actually the first person mentioned to perform miracles and to perform these amazing signs and wonders that were outside of the apostles doing it. So this was an ordinary man who got filled with the Spirit who is now doing signs and wonders. That's amazing. See, I love this because Stephen was chosen to distribute food to the widows, to help lead and to serve his community. And in his service, in his daily showing up, his daily loving God, daily loving people, God used him to perform amazing, miraculous signs and wonders. See, religious group leaders, they came up against Stephen. And when they couldn't out talk him about Jesus not really being the Messiah, they secretly found people that would lie. They found people that would speak false accusations about Stephen, accusations that would be punished by death. And Stephen was doing everything right. He knew who God was. He knew God. He was walking in freedom. He discovered his purpose. Come on. He was making a difference. God was using him. And yet people were still coming against him. Jesus explains the reason why this happens. He explains it so well in John chapter 15. Check this out. He says, just remember, this is Jesus speaking. Just remember when the unbelieving world hates you, they first hated me. If you were to give your allegiance to the world, they would love you and they would welcome you as one of their own. But because you won't align yourself with the values of this world, hear me, because you're living differently, because you look differently, because you're not doing what the world is doing, but you're doing what Jesus says, they will hate you. I have chosen you and I've taken you out of this world. Come on, to be mine. So remember what I taught you, that a servant isn't superior to his master. And since they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. When I see the hate in one person being targeted in another, I go back to John 15. The world does not know Jesus. When I see friends using abusive rhetoric with one another, when I see hate or division, persecution, come on, when I see evil, yes, evil has a name, it is evil. I have to remind myself of Ephesians 6, 12, and hear me, everybody who knows Jesus, you need to write down this scripture. You need to have this scripture written down so you can reference it. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, come on, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So our our fight isn't necessarily flesh to flesh, human to human. We have a fight going on behind the scenes of God versus evil. Stephen preached Jesus, the savior of the world, and he was stoned to death. He lost his life. When something awful happens, we often wonder why. Why is this happening? Friends, because there's evil in our broken world and we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And I may not know why certain things happen. I may not know why all things happen, but I do know this promise of God that problems pull out purpose and that purpose always points to promise. Check out Romans chapter eight, verse 28. I love this. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. God desires good things for us and it will work out. See, Stephen lost his life. Acts chapter seven, verse 59, it shows us his last moments. It says this, while they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out. Hear me, this is as people were throwing hate at him, throwing physical stones at him, yelling and cursing at him. This was on his last minutes of his life, his last moments. He chose to say this. Then he fell on his knees and he cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. My goodness. Friends, if we can learn something from Stephen, yes, live a life of honesty and integrity. Use your passions, use your giftings to solve problems. Walk in your purpose, but hear me, learn to forgive. 
He followed the example of Jesus before Jesus died on the cross. He asked them to, God, forgive them for they know not what they do. So here is Stephen, an ordinary person. That's why I love the Bible. Friends, it is not hard to understand. It's not hard to grasp and embrace it to your life. We learn from it because an ordinary man like Stephen was able to follow the example of Jesus. He was a spirit-filled, come on, waiter. He waited on people. He served people. And here he was in the last moments of his life, able to forgive the very people who were killing him. We need to forgive. Maybe you're here and you're watching this today. Is there someone that you need to forgive? We can also learn to examine ourselves. How's your character? Are you a person of integrity? How honest am I? Am I Am I growing in close proximity to God? Do I know my purpose? Do I even know myself well enough to tell someone what my strengths are? Could I share with someone my passion or my gifts? Maybe you need to spend some time getting to know you. That's why I love Avenue Church. I love the growth track that we get to have a spiritual gifts test. We get to do a personality test and learn to know ourselves a little bit better and discover the unique design that God placed in us the moment we were in our mother's womb. That's amazing to me that God has a unique design that he placed in you from your moment of conception. God is amazing. Maybe today you're here and you need to be reminded of God's promises. If you're feeling hopeless, That's a good indicator that you need to be reminded of God's good promises. And last but not least, we need to make a difference. Be ready for opportunities. Be ready to do something. Friends, I would love to pray for you. This this story is so encouraging because what the enemy meant for evil See, the enemy wanted to take out Stephen. The, 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 the other side thought that they were winning when Stephen was killed. But what they don't know is actually that propelled the church to move all to the ends of the earth. It scattered the believers. And the believers didn't scatter in fear. They scattered still preaching the gospel. They scattered still telling everyone about Jesus and sharing with signs and wonders and prayers. And God was doing amazing things. And the church grew even more across the world. And that's what Jesus told us to do. He told us to go into the world, to be witnesses all throughout the world, to share the love and and just the amazing things that God has planned in Jesus Christ. It's awesome. So what I want to do today before we close, I want to pray for you because I want, I don't want anyone to ever not be living out the purpose, the, 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 the meaning to your life that God has specifically designed for you. So let me pray for you today. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And I ask, Lord God, that you would take, God, this word today and you would use it as an encouragement. Father, are there problems that we're facing right now that could pull out purpose in us? Are there purposes in our lives right now, come on, that are pointing to promises that we need to be reminded of? No one knows us better than you. So I pray that you would use this time today, God, to encourage our hearts and to bring us into close proximity to you. In Jesus' name, amen.